In this video I'm going to look at redox reactions in terms of electrons. So obviously a good place to start is the definition for a redox reaction. So redox reactions are reactions involving both reduction and oxidation processes. And there's an example on the board. So we've got the reaction between sodium and chlorine to make sodium chloride. And I've marked up the oxidation process and the reduction process. So what this video is going to do is it's going to look at what the electrons are doing and how we can use those to determine why this is the oxidation process and why this is the reduction process. So we'll start by looking at what's happening to the sodium in the reaction. So the sodium on the left hand side is in its element form whereas on the right hand side the sodium is in its ion form here. So we need to ask ourselves how does a sodium atom turn into a sodium ion. So there's the dot and cross diagrams for the sodium atom which we've got on the left and the sodium ion which we've got in the NaCl. And obviously to turn a sodium atom into a sodium ion it's got to lose this outer electron. You can see in the diagrams I'm only showing the outermost shells. So how does it do that? Well it obviously gets rid of this electron so I'll but one way to think about it is it throws it away and it lands on the other side of the arrow. So what we've got here is what we call the half equation. The half equation just shows one half of the full reaction, the full redox reaction. And this is the oxidation half. So in terms of electrons, what is oxidation? Well, oxidation is the loss of electrons. So we can say that sodium has been oxidized to sodium plus by losing the electron. Now you'll notice that we've got a 2 in front of the Na and the NaCl to balance the equation. So in this reaction, this happens to two sodium atoms. So two sodium atoms each lose their outer electron and form two sodium ions and would generate two electrons. So if you imagine two there, two there and two there. Now obviously we should always show equations in their simplest form. So this half equation here we would have to write it without the twos there. So that's why that half equation is like that. When we come on to the next, the other half, the reduction part involving the chlorine, you'll hopefully see why we need those twos in the equation. So if we look at the chlorine now and ask ourselves the same question, what form have we got chlorine in here? Well, it's in its element form. What form have we got the chlorine in now? It's in its ion form, so it's the chloride ion in NaCl. So again I've drawn the dot and cross diagrams for the before and after. So on the left hand side of the equation we've got the chlorine molecule. So there it is there. And on the right hand side we've got two chloride ions in those two moles of NaCl. So you can see there they are there. So if you can see what's happened, this left hand chlorine with its unshaded circles for electrons has become a chloride ion. So that cross there is an electron from one of the sodium atoms. The right hand chlorine in the molecule with its shaded electrons has also become a chloride ion and that's received the other electron from the second sodium atom. And so we've generated two chloride ions. So the half, well this is the half equation or the beginnings of it. We need two electrons of course to make that happen. They've obviously come from those two sodiums. So we would write that like this. Cl2 plus 2E minus goes to two Cl minus ions. You can see now that we've got a substance gaining electrons, not losing electrons. So this is the opposite process. This is the reduction process. 
So reduction is the gain of electrons. So we've got this handy mnemonic we can use when we're dealing with electrons and it's the oil rig word. So oil rig, oil, oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is the gain of electrons. So here's one for you to try. Work out the oxidation and reduction process and explain it in terms of electrons. When you've had a go, press play and I'll go through the answer. So there's the overall answer. So bromine has been reduced to bromide and iodide ions have been oxidised to iodine. So let's go through why. So if we look at the bromine first, the Br2 molecule has turned into two bromide ions. So this is the same as what happened to the chlorine to chloride in the worked example at the start of the video. So how does this happen? So if you can visualise the dot and cross diagram, we've got to give each of those separate bromine atoms that are making up the molecule an extra electron to become these two isolated bromide ions. So we need to gain two electrons here. So gain of electrons, so that's reduction. So I've drawn the dot and cross diagrams to help explain the um, oxidation process, which involves the iodine. So we've got two separate iodide ions on the left. Now they are in the equation. And we're going to form um, an iodine molecule, a diatomic molecule. So to do that, these two iodide ions need to lose these extra electrons, these crosses in the diagrams. And then that would generate two separate atoms, and then we can form this diatomic molecule. So those two extra electrons are going to be on this side of the right hand side of the equation. And you can see that we've lost electrons. There they are there. So this is the oxidation process. And there's how the half equation would be written.